Oh, oh, hello! I'm Ron Charles. You may know me as the fiction critic for a major American newspaper. Called the Washington Post. Yes, the rumors are true. The Totally Hip Video Book Review is now officially sponsored by our Capitals newspaper. Now, like you, I was very concerned about entangling my total hypnicity in the stodgy world of mainstream journalism. But, like most newspapers, the Post knows that if anything's going to save the future of journalism, it'll probably be summaries of literary novels. So at the bargaining table, I pretty much brought them to their knees. Mwah. Thank you, Marcus. I won't let you down. Now, some of you are probably worried that this massive infusion of corporate cash could corrupt my critical independence that you've come to depend on. I give you my word, that will never happen. Our totally hip video book reviews will remain just as insightful and trenchant as ever, all condensed into just 60 seconds. And speaking of condensed, on a crisp fall morning, nothing goes better with a fine novel than the mmm good taste of Campbell's condensed tomato soup. You're not likely to notice any changes at all, but we'll be subtly monetizing our viewership in order to bring you information about useful products based on your buying habits, email, and web browser history. If you'd like to opt out of this service, just follow the instructions on your screen. This week's book is a new novel by Sarah Gruen called Ape House. If you belong to a book club anywhere in this solar system, you know Sarah Gruen as the author of a charming bestseller called Water for Elephants, about a Depression-era circus. About halfway through that book, the narrator finally figures out how to communicate with a stubborn pachyderm. And now, animal communication is the subject of her new novel. But this time, it's apes. Remember way back in 1998, when Coco the Gorilla conducted an interspecies chat with 8,000 AOL You've subscribers? Sarah Gruen based her new novel on the work being done at the Great Ape Trust in Iowa, where scientists have actually taught apes to communicate with human beings using symbols and signs. Now, I'm deeply sympathetic to the strong animal rights argument this book wants to make. I, I gave up eating pork after reading Annie Proust's This Old Ace in the Hole. But beyond parroting a few animal rights platitudes, Ape House doesn't have much to say about the subject it raises so earnestly. I mean, Gruen investigated how apes learn to communicate with humans, but then she buried all her discoveries under a silly thriller about a sad sack journalist and a primate scientist. That's too bad, because the opening chapters show just how much potential this story really has. A reporter named John comes to Kansas City to write about a lab where a scientist named Isabel is actually talking to bonobos, small cousins of chimpanzees. Gruen has a deep, sympathetic regard for these animals. They'll be your favorite characters, too. And she conveys their playfulness and eager sexuality with great delight. But then something horrible happens. <laughs> to the novel and to the apes, terrorists bomb the lab. Dr. Isabel Duncan barely survives, and her cowardly university, desperate to avoid further attacks, sells her animals off to a notorious pornographer for a reality TV show called Ape House. At first, it seems Gruen is resetting her whole novel as a zany satire of American culture, from media access to medical ethics, with the poor ape standing in as the only humane creatures in a world gone mad. I'm hip to that. But we never get more than rough sketches. The pornographer, his obscene ape television show, the radical eco-protesters, the outrageous tabloid news coverage. It's all dashed off and obvious. Instead, the story insists on following a couple of limp romantic crises involving John and his depressed wife, and Dr. Isabel Duncan and her fiancé, who may be monkeying around with the wrong people. The bonobos make a few more appearances, but we stay locked in John and Isabel's mopey stories while all the interesting action seems to be taking place somewhere else. The 800-pound gorilla in the room is why someone at Gruen's new publishing house didn't give her the benefit of a good edit. I mean, even if the trite characters and the silly plot couldn't be saved, why leave the pages so pocked with cliché lines? The answer, I can only assume, has something to do with the more than $5 million that a division of Random House reportedly paid Gruen to lure her from Algonquin, her small North Carolina publisher. That whole process has misserved a beloved author and her elephantine fan base. Well, we just made it! Until next time, I'm Ron Charles, your totally hip video book reviewer. Yeah.